Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Margit, for inviting us. And um, yes, so the talk we give will have three parts. I give a brief and very personal view, my view of the evolution of CRT supply and kind of trying to evaluate it. Florian will give a little more an insight about the world of chassis and television technology and boards and what is done at the Kolovac factory, uh, no factory, manufactory. And then at the end, I try kind of to rebalance the requirements, the options, the skills, and what will be possible uh, or what has to be done. And uh, we learned about a lot of the problems, but uh, let's start. So starting, um, well, when I started to work in 83 in this field, televisions were just, they came out of the box brand new from the factories and uh, there wasn't even any question about supply. Later in the early 90s, although there were small signs of change, for example, we tried to uh, make a new iteration of Namjoon Pike's iconic Senfor TV, which actually is only a physical manipulation, but for whatever reason, that television stayed blank. So there was a change, something, but at that time, we were very uh, yeah, pragmatic, so we just used a different television set that worked this way. Uh, the second stage, talking about the later part of 2010, the largest supply of television sets, of sets in bigger numbers, were only available to second-hand dealers, looking like this. was inside a huge barn with, uh, I think, 2,000 televisions. And at that time, the notion like the new is always a better got some cracks because we had to evaluate or think about that uh, there are two different kind of news. So we have the old new, which probably was the analog new, where the technology, the improvement of the technology and the new quality for the viewer was based on a continuous uh, improvement. And we had this kind of new digital new where the improvement for the viewer was based on a radical change in the back end of the technology. So the common phrase, which probably was present in all the lives of many artists, and when you talk to artists or have artist interviews, very often the notion says, oh, let's make it new, it's better. But uh, there was a change, so there's two different kind of news, and we have to think about this. And then the latest phase is a little tragic, but today television supply looks like this. So it's only individual pieces, it's only individual items, and every television has to be handled as a unique um, patient. <laughs> uh, yeah, to give you a little more deeper insight into this field, uh, Florian will continue. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Jochen did this freestyle, so I have to skip through all the notes right now. <laughs> um, yes, I get more on the technical part of what we do and what our perspective in the future might be. And I will start with the, like the history and the, the ethics of the TV and in media art. So it started in 1934 when first consumer TVs were uh, mass produced and was available for everyone. And uh, since then, thousands of different models were created. Um, and certainly, the world of media art made good use of many of them. So uh, I've seen thousands of different models already um, use the media art. And the thing about this broad diversity of having these many models is that you have a giant spectrum of parts used for each device. Um, here you may see how many thousands of parts there are in, a, in different TVs. Um, and the thing about this is that sourcing parts from an industry that's long gone is like looking for a needle in a haystack without even knowing if there is a, uh, a needle in there. <laughs> um, the thing about iconic models like the Sony PVM, you see the, in the middle and the right one, many of you may recognize are PVMs. Um, they have a big community with them, so they might get more support and uh, people 
share infos with each other or where to get new parts. But this is only a solution for a counted time. This won't work forever. Um, especially for the fixture tube, you really don't have any more service anymore to find anywhere. So that's over for any TV and any model everywhere, except you call us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and here we have some examples of um, like <laughs> microwaves. <laughs> I guess you can see it's, um, it was a beautiful TV once, but now it's uh, flat screen, Jochen snapped this somewhere, I don't think we mentioned yeah, the gallery. In a, uh, it's in the museum, it's actually a sad piece, I must say, and I hope the person who made it is not in the audience, no? but, uh, <laughs> no? but okay. on the other hand, it's, it's a very beautiful crafted machine, and these are more examples from the time where, because there was no other way to do it, people tried to put flat screens instead of CRTs. Yeah. Even and it was really even if it was really carefully made and executed, uh, it still isn't really convincing, as you see. <laughs> and uh, a sculptural perspective as well, from like the bow, the curve of the picture tube is gone, and of course the image quality is a whole different story. Um, the lifespan, the lifespan is another thing. You know, LCD screens have listed like a lifespan of five to 10 years, CRT televisions or picture tubes, Rafa go up to like 20 plus years easily. Sony even states 30 years, but it's Sony. <laughs> um, yeah, and of course, we always have the question about uh, changing original artworks, like the ethics of it, but maybe we do this in the next conference next year. <laughs> and yeah, here you can see um, an original CRT, a Korea TV, and what it looks like, uh, a screen which has milk poured over it on the right, but it's actually an LCD screen and uh, it just shows the different uh, characteristics of uh, just the angle of your view and uh, the, the color mismatching just by, just by standing somewhere else, just by looking from another's perspective. Um, another the other topic of us is the Hunterex or general the industrial display monitors. They have a really, really, really huge demand right now. And many museums are using them just not for artworks, but they're also just like used as exhibition monitors to display certain uh, art videos. And uh, many of them reach their uh, end of the lifespan already. So um, there's really not much to do for them anymore, and Hunter X parts are gone for many years already because it was a small Italian company and you don't get any more parts from them. Um, here we see a really uh, bizarre approach on uh, trying to save like the picture tube characteristic, which I approve of, which is very cool. But you can see here on the left, we have the original Hunter X chassis, as many of you may know from your galleries or museums you work at. And um, on the right, there's an approach of putting like a cheaply made chassis into it, like a substitution just to have a running Hunter X again. But of course, this can't be a, solu can't be a solution because uh, you of course have the cheaper quality. This is a Turkish chassis, which is very low end pricey and it's really cheaply made. And also, because it's a really relative new model, the uh, chassis was taken from, you uh, have 100 hertz, so you have digital picture processing, which the original Hunter X doesn't have. And uh, this costs, of course, not having like the, you might have the original image or source quality, but the uh, uh, CIT displays another frame rate and has like processing tools, maybe even filters to it, like modern flat screens. So that uh, really isn't the original approach to it. Um, the next part is like a bit about the history of uh, more of my father, because I only do this for three years now. Um, and this, this started in 2015, when my father was called by the Kunstpalast in Düsseldorf. And uh, so before this, he, was, uh, he had ended his uh, workshop in 2006. 
because there just was an, any demand anymore for uh, for CRTs anymore. Like we worked for the consumer and industry market, and everything was closed down in 2006. Everything was dismantled. All the machineries were uh, thrown away to the scrap. And uh, in 2015, we started again, and since then, we uh, we built everything back up. Or we, I have to get cheers for my father because he did all this himself. Um, he basically rebuilt the whole Kola work workshop as it was, back to the uh, back to like a new Kola work workshop, and uh, did a lot of uh, media media art restoration since then. Yeah, here you have some examples of the varieties of uh, artworks we've done so far. This is a Petrus Wandrei work. I think it's stated here. Yeah, it's from the Sammlung Falkenberg. It's like very, very small eyes of a robot. <laughs> and then we have the beautiful work at the Staatsgalerie Stuttgart. We did with Arno Omermann. It's a uh, boy's head, which is still exhibited. You should check it out. It's very cool. <laughs> um, and the thing about this, as you see, we made done many things and had many, uh, many different ways and always came up with new solutions. But... Uh, and we also have these thousands of parts gathered, as you may see in our workshop yesterday. But this only can go on for so long, and this all has an end. And even the demand is so high, uh, as more and more museums start to understand the importance of keeping this original technology and displaying it in the original way. Um, this is basically the reason we did the cooperation with the ZKM to face this great challenge of uh, redoing the picture tubes and keeping the original art alive like it's supposed to be. So our idea for the future is to create a universal solution for the majorities of TVs they are. And um, our aim for this is to have clean and simple servicing options for almost every TV. And this is why we will uh, define a process in the coming years. I can't tell you the exact date, but we will define a process on how to recycle the guts of the picture tube and kind of make it work all over again and renew it all the time. Like uh, my father said from his personal experience, he can do tubes 12 times and even more. Um, so this won't run out and you recycle it. <laughs> um, and for the electronics, we want to have an, a new board uh, or many different types of new boards for individual TVs so you can have uh, like a set of maybe three chassis and uh, adjust them to the kind of TV you need at the moment. Uh, to reach this goal, the efforts in the workshop have to be combined and uh, we need a lot of man work and uh, manpower for this, but we also need a scientific approach towards this and a lot of research and organization and uh, that's what Jochen gets into now. <laughs> So, Thank you. Uh, so, well, w I thought about it, so I tried to come up. I can look here, so anyway, uh, I'll get used to it. So, there are there more or less four points we have to think about. So, one is to get an idea about the requirements that we'll need in this process that uh, Florian already described. We have to see what are our options. And... Um, then the HR, as Americans would say, comes in. We have to think about our skills. And um, during the process, we will, use, we will lose a lot of information. So a lot of things, a lot of research, a lot of old product productivity, manuals, uh, old books will be lost because we don't need them at this moment. But we have to make sure that knowledge about the technology finds a place where it might be addressed and researched in 100 years. So the fourth point is the archive, which uh, will be a basis, which we, during the using process, might forget about. But uh, we have to think about and keep in mind that this is necessary. To go a little more into the details, so the requirements, there are two ways that uh, we need television sets, CRT television sets. One is uh, that the museum world or the gallery, the art world, needs uh, 
reliable exhibition equipment to show, for example, single channel works or installations that are on display for a longer time. But the more challenging uh, equipment that is needed is the one that is specific for an artwork that might be in storage most of its life. So we have to find and have to, have to but this is not only a physical thing, how to keep it, but uh, this needs to uh, define a methodology, how a specific television has to be handled when it's sleeping for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years in a storage. There has to be a routine, there has to be a definition, what has to be done. It also has to be tested whether it really makes sense and is useful. And um, to talk about this one thing again, um, there has to be a person who is responsible and uh, who gets this on his to-do list. So there is something, so it's not only the one object uh, they need to repair, but it's a long process, it's a long definition of, of handling things that belong to the requirement list. And uh, going to the options, um, so we can agree that giving up is no option. So, um, so we have to see what material is available, what Christian already did, sourcing available uh, electron gun systems, uh, connecting to scientists or engineers that worked in the industry to get their idea, their background and their knowledge. This is a very important thing that has to be done. And uh, then details, Florian already described uh, the development of, of uh, recycling uh, electron gun uh, systems that were used and rebuilding them. Also um, to overcome the problematic diversity of all the electronic boards by developing kind of a uh, three kinds maybe of universal boards and a specific um, task for these boards or this development is that these boards should be developed in a way that they can be serviced or even built in a manufacturer, handcraft manufacturer basis. So, oops, forgot about this. Because in the future, uh, we will not have any educated television technician around anymore because not only the company ceased, uh, but there is no education anymore. So we have to level the technical situation that we use together with the skill of the people that service the, or that will service the uh, technology. So this very special, or this idea of designing a new board also has to include the possibilities how it can be built and how it can be serviced in the future. So the test is way longer or way deeper and more complex to be done, but uh, it still is possible because also a lot of the engineers that Christian talked to, they get very excited and passionate about their, their trade, especially now it's uh, dissolving. And uh, it's one of the big um, things to get this uh, knowledge to put it together, make a good use for the requirements that we defined and uh, then come up with a platform that will allow to transfer the knowledge to have people that has to learn these skills, especially for that. And then it could be an ongoing, uh, a generation, ongoing thing going to the next generations. And uh, this will allow then to uh, have the television uh, available in the future. So, well, that's it. That's it. Not it, but it's a lot. <laughs> Thank you.